Hello students, we have come with uh, another important lecture that is mechanism of urine formation. So in mechanism of urine formation, there are three events in this. One is called ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration. Second one is uh, selective reabsorption. Third one is tubular secretion. So these are three events. All these, the entire mechanism occurs inside the functional units of kidneys nephrons so we are not discussing the structure of the nephron here a part of the nephron where this ultra filtration or glomerular filtration occurs so here it starts with so first to understand the process of ultra filtration or glomerular filtration you need to have some basics of the structure of the nephron so here this is called a bowman's capsule so this is called Bowman's capsule. This Bowman's capsule is double walled cup. This is double walled uh, with the outer layer and inner layer. So this is the Bowman's capsule. Now these are all made of squamous cells. So the arrangement of this squamous cells is something different here fine so all these are flat squamous cells and these are the food processes of the squamous cells all these are squamous cells and these squamous cells are called podocytes so these podocytes they have pores in between these are called slit pores so through the slit pores what all the plasma that get filtered and the entire plasma from the lumen of the cup through the slit pores enter into the tubular part of the nephron so the tubular part starts with the proximal convoluted tubule so we are not discussing the tubular part of it right now now so another interesting thing is along with this Bowman's capsule a branch of renal artery called efferent arteriole please remember this this is called efferent arteriole enters inside the lumen of cup and divides into network of capillaries this network of capillaries is called glomerulus so remember glomerulus is formed from efferent arteriole and leaves as efferent arteriole this is efferent arteriole it leaves as now so one more uh, important point here is glomerulus is a capillary net this capillary net glomerulus is also lined by squamous epithelium single layered cells so the squamous epithelium of the glomerulus and the squamous epithelium of the Bowman's capsule and the basement membrane between these two right will form the filtration membrane fine next so another important point here is I said blood enters into efferent arteriole divides into network of capillaries called glomerulus and leave as efferent arteriole so now observe the efferent and efferent arteriole see look into the diameter of efferent arteriole and diameter of efferent arteriole diameter of efferent arteriole is greater and diameter of efferent arteriole is lesser this is the key factor for building pressure inside the glomerulus and also an artery is ending with an artery remember this is one more interesting thing efferent arteriole is living as efferent arteriole so this is also one of the reason for pressure inside the glomerulus right fine now how exactly the pressures are maintained inside what kind of a pressure is set inside and how the pressures are created inside so we find out so look here 
So I said efferent arteriole is greater and efferent arteriole is lesser in diameter. As a result, inside the uh, glomerulus, what all the blood that is flowing is, is under pressure. I mean, it creates pressure. That is called um, hydrostatic pressure of blood. Hydrostatic pressure of blood. So this is hydrostatic pressure of blood. So how much is this hydrostatic pressure of blood? So this hydrostatic pressure of blood is estimated to be around 60 to 70 millimeters of mercury. Now this is opposed by two forces two pressures one is see already this is blood the blood is flowing inside so inside this blood there are plasma proteins plasma proteins exert pressure on this hydrostatic pressure so that is called colloidal osmotic pressure of blood so this is colloidal osmotic pressure of blood. So this is estimated to be around 30 to 32 millimeters of mercury. Now, and also there is one more pressure which is opposing the hydrostatic pressure of the blood. So already there is a fluid present in the lumen of the Bowman's capsule. That's called preoccupying fluid. That preoccupying fluid also exerts opposing force on hydrostatic pressure of the blood. That's called capsular hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure. This is capsular hydrostatic pressure. So this is estimated to be around 10 to 18 millimeters of mercury. So now let us calculate what is the net filtration pressure. So net filtration pressure will be equivalent to what all these hydrostatic pressure of blood this is opposed by two forces one is colloidal osmotic pressure of blood plus capsular hydrostatic pressure this is 60 if i take and this is 32 plus 18 so it comes around 10 millimeters of mercury is the net filtration pressure so it is estimated to be around 10 to 25 millimeters mercury of mercury pressure so with this is a net filtration pressure and with this net filtration pressure the plasma of the blood is filtered into the lumen of the bowman's capsule which is called as glomerular filtrate that's called glomerular filtrate or this is also known as renal fluid so this is what occurs inside the bowman's capsule so now this bowman's capsule along with glomerulus is called as renal corpuscle or we can call it as together as malfusion body so inside this renal corpuscle or malfusion body the fluid the renal fluid that is blood plasma is collected Fine. Now, let us calculate how much of this renal fluid is, uh, I mean, filtered. Fine. So, this is our efferent arteriole and this is our efferent arteriole. Now, this is Bowman's capsule. Now, this entire structure is called as renal corpuscle. Or I just call it as Malfusion 
body. This is malfusion body. So how much amount of the renal fluid is collected? So let us will have a look at into this. Fine. Now to understand this, first what is cardiac output? So how much is cardiac output? So cardiac output of a healthy individual is 5 liters that is 5000 milliliter per minute. This is a cardiac output of a healthy individual. Fine. Out of this cardiac output, 20% of this is entering into kidneys. So guys remember, the organ that receives maximum amount of blood is kidney. 20% of the cardiac output go to kidneys. That means every minute kidneys are receiving 1000 milliliter of blood. That is 20% of 5000 ml is 1000 milliliter of blood. Both kidneys they will receive. Are you following? So fine. So what exactly the blood is composed of? As you know that blood has two components. Blood cells and plasma. So what is the amount of plasma and blood cells? What is the amount of the plasma and blood cells? Look here. Cells are 40% and plasma is 60%. So here cells are not in our discussion. Only plasma. So 60% of the plasma is entering into the glomerulus. That means 60% of this 1000 ml will be 600 milliliter per minute that is 600 milliliters of plasma is entering into the glomerulus yes guys everybody clear now out of this 600 ml how much is filtered with the net filtration pressure of 10 to 25 mm of mercury so listen 20 percent of this is filtered got it so 20 percent of this 600 ml will be 120 milliliters that is 120 milliliters of glomerular filtrate is formed per minute so in your ncrt it is mentioned as 125 milliliters per minute so that is if the cardiac output is around 6000 milliliter or if the glomerular filtrate is around 1100 to 1200 ml then you can get it as 125 milliliter but here for a simple calculation i'm just showing you 120 milliliters per minute is your filtration per minute so if you calculate it per day how much so 120 per minute that is per hour is into 60 and per day 24 hours if you calculate like this it is 180 liters of glomerular filtrate is formed per day done so this is what is glomerular filtrate which is formed per day yes next what exactly this glomerular filtrate is consisting of? It is consisting of water. The filtrate consisting of renal fluid is consisting of water. Urea. It has uric acid. Creatine. It also has glucose. Amino acids are present and also salts sodium potassium calcium magnesium chloride bicarbonate etc all these are present so that's what is the filtrate that is what the glomerular filtrate that is formed now in this glomerular filtrate there are many useful substances like glucose we are not going to lose glucose from our body amino acids we are not going to lose amino acids from our body 
right excess water will be lost and uh, excess amount of urea is lost so as a result what all this glomerular filtrate that is ultimately formed in the lumen of the cup it enters into the tubular part in the tubular part selective reabsorption occurs so what all the useful substances are there all are reabsorbed and also water salts and others excess amounts are sent out remaining everything is reabsorbed this is what happens in the next stage that's called your uh, selective reabsorption so this is what is ultra filtration or glomerular filtration because with a net filtration pressure of 10 mm of hg so everything the plasma of the blood is filtered this is called ultra filtration glomerular pressure filtration as a result of that the fluid that is collected into the lumen of the cup is known as the glomerular filtrate or we call it as renal fluid or you can say it as a primary urine fine so this is a concept so to make it clear just observe this animation so this is what is the blood plasma all the way entering and all this blood plasma is filtered and remaining blood through the efferent arterial is going out fine so this is what you called ultra filtration or glomerular filtration.